Good morning, everybody. My name is Morris Button. I'm the CEO of City and Financial Global, and it's my pleasure to have with me today Simon Zardet, who is Chair of Finance for Biodiversity, which is shortly to be rebranded into Nature Finance, of which uh, Simon will become Executive Director. He's also Senior Advisor to the Task Force on Nature-Related Financial Disclosure and Co-Lead of the Task Force on Nature Markets. Uh, Simon, good morning. Good morning, Morris. Thanks very much for inviting me to participate. Our pleasure. Uh, let's get directly to the question, Simon. Uh, first, please could you outline the background to the setting up of Nature Finance? What are you aiming to achieve and why? So, Finance for Biodiversity was set up in the last stages of 2019 with a mandate more broadly to increase the materiality of nature in financial decision making. And for those knowledgeable with the area, we've had decades of work on conservation finance that has largely stayed outside of mainstream finance. Uh, over the following three years, of course, not entirely or even partly to do with F for B, um, in fact, that entry of nature into financial market materiality analysis and innovation and new asset classes has really progressed a pace and so our work has tried to encourage that through research through advocacy um, through direct engagement development of new types of tools policy <clears throat> legislation uh, and a range of other initiatives we're a non-profit institution uh, and uh, and will continue to be so so at the beginning of october we will launch as nature finance as a swiss-based uh, non-profit organization broadly progressing the same work over a longer period of time than originally envisaged. Mm. And of course, there are many other initiatives in this area. I think on your uh, website, it lists something like 19 uh, other initiatives. So how does Nature Finance fit with all of these, you know, such as TNFD, PBAF, Finance for Diversity Pledge, and Business for Nature, etc.? Well, the first thing to notice is just how extraordinary what you just said is, because mm. if you went back three or four years, you know, that website would be blank, not because we didn't exist, but because actually almost all of those initiatives have emerged over the last three or four years. So that's in and of itself a sort of signal of that upturn in the innovation curve, if you like, where yes. a whole lot of new initiatives are beginning to emerge, sometimes jostling with each other, occasionally competing with each other, but all broadly pushing in the same direction. Uh, our work um, perhaps is best distinguished um, by looking at some of the individual work streams that we push forward. Uh, next week in Cairo uh, at a pre-COP Africa Finance Ministerial, we will launch the Sustainability Link Sovereign Debt Hub, the culmination of three years of work advancing nature and climate links sovereign debt instruments uh, that will be joined by an advisory group including the world bank and the icma and iif and many other actors and illustrates if you like the kinds of phases of work that we tend to take um, across all of our work streams original problem definition in this case debt instrument innovation advocacy engagement with the imf and many other actors encouraging pilots and different approaches in the market to be tried out. And then now this next stage, which is <clears throat> in effect to establish a facility to support uh, sovereign debt issuers and other market actors working on KPI linked sovereign debt instruments. So all of our work streams are not following exactly the same path, but they illustrate that we're far more than a sort of upstream research and policy group and that we're taking work down into the market whilst not actually becoming part of the market itself. Okay, interesting. I mean, that, that, that word market is, is quite, in relation to nature, it is quite a novel concept. I, you, you also co-lead of the task force on nature markets. So perhaps you could say a few words about that. You know, what, what are the role of markets in protecting nature? Uh, and how do you protect or prevent the uh, monetization of nature leading to further depletion and damage? How do you get the benefits of markets without the downside? Yeah, so maybe 
the starting point is the flip side, which is what is the role of nature in markets? And then we can flip it around uh, and address the question that you're asking. I, I think the starting point of our work and any science-based approach is to embrace the fact that 100% of the global economy is 100% dependent on nature. There is no market, no product, no service, no job, no nothing if nature is absent. And that's not just true for trees and food, that's true for iPhones and rockets to the moon. Uh, and so the important thing to start with is that everything in markets is nature. And the question is whether it's leading to extractive, uh, unsustainable uses of nature or yeah. whether it is leading to sustainable uses of nature. That's really the dilemma. So it's not market or not market. That's not really a frame that historically or scientifically uh, stacks up. So the second yeah. part is what we've seen historically is that nature is not simply undervalued in markets, but is ignored. It has no value. In other words, it's fundamental to the way markets work, um, yeah. but is in practice not valued at all. And yet over recent years, we've begun to see more and more examples of nature being specifically valued and traded. Interesting, a few days ago, we saw the Australian government announcing the first push to develop a national biodiversity credit market. And I think we will see that in many other jurisdictions and cross jurisdictional processes. We know that voluntary carbon markets, perhaps 40, 50% of all carbon being traded is currently coming from nature-based assets. We know within financial markets that initiatives like the work of Intrinsic Exchange and the New York Stock Exchange is leading to, in this case, so-called nature asset companies being distinctly listed and profiled on the New York Stock Exchange. So there is a wide range of initiatives in the real economy and in the financial economy that is specifically monetizing nature and trading nature. And the role of the task force on nature markets, which is an extraordinary array of political, technological, science-based, research-based individuals that we are servicing, is to figure out how can we ensure that this surge in the monetization and trading of nature can lead to more equitable nature positive outcomes. So effectively, that does include a whole lot of issues regarding market innovation, but it will come down a lot as it has with voluntary carbon markets to how this new generation of markets is governed. Mm. And, and I suppose part of that, of course, is having financial institutions really understand uh, the risks and the opportunities uh, that are involved and how to account for nature in their decision-making processes. I mean, how, how well do you think they do understand this? It, it, are, they, are they at the start of a learning curve? And do you provide guidance to, to help them get their heads around this? You know, I was on a call yesterday preparing for um, a talk that I'm giving in Brussels in a few weeks um, to a hundred uh, 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 analysts, asset managers, folks in the financial community. And I was being talked through what my talking points might be by the hosts. And uh, at the end of the first round of the discussion, um, somebody rather sheepishly said to me, that, that sounds absolutely fantastic, Simon, but you do realize that almost nobody in the state or, or in, in, in the audience will actually know what nature is. <laughs> yeah, um, and, and so it might be useful for you to do one or two minutes at the beginning to actually explain what you're talking about. And, and I think, you know, that's a pretty sad statement. Um, but I think um, from, a, from a financial market point of view is probably true. Mm. Yeah, um, that of course there is the bleeding edge of financial institutions that are really active in the space. And there are some amazing examples in the asset management business, in the banking business, over on the insurance side or the private equity side, lots of folks really at the bleeding edge that we're working with. But if you ask me about the market as a whole, yeah, mm. I would give a very low score at this point. And so initiatives like the Task Force on Nature Related Financial Disclosure, which we're very involved in, in a number of different ways, in a sense, helps to lay 
the scalable, commoditizable foundations of how the financial community writ large, not avant-garde, will need to understand metrics, understand nature dependency, understand nature impact, translate that through into material risk, build scenarios and transition pathways, largely as we have done in at least the carbon side of the climate space through the TCFD and our route. So that's a sort of foundational level, but then the opportunity side, yeah, which in yeah. theory, those metrics would cover, but in practice don't, it mm. is really, um, you know, very, very much a work in progress. You know, yeah. folks trading in carbon markets understand a lot about nature-based solutions because they're buying long-term carbon uh, offtake agreements. Um, yeah. But when one looks at some of the deeper technologies associated with nature positive investments, um, the story becomes quite different. You know, where really is vertical farming or alternate protein going? What mm. do we really think about biogenetic mining and what are the licensing agreements associated with it? You know, there are a host of new issues that the bleeding edge of the business community understands, but the broader financial community hasn't even begun really to get their heads around. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think there's a huge gap from the largest institutions that have the capability and resources to focus properly and the others for whom this is just coming onto the radar. But finally, uh, Simon, can you tell us how you're, you're proposing to measure your own success? But when you reflect back and say, I don't know, five years time, uh, what will be the, the, the key things that you'll look at in terms of what you have achieved and haven't achieved that will determine your own success? Yeah. Um, survival, I guess, is not one, probably physical survival on my part. And, and I say that in kind of in jest, but, but it's also by way of saying this is a hugely dynamic space mm. with many, many opportunities for making a positive difference as well as making a dollar. Yeah. Um, so there's a massive amount going on and I hope we are one of an ecosystem contributing to that. But let me come back to perhaps slightly more interesting or granulated ways of answering your question. Firstly, in five years time, I would hope that the vast bulk of the global financial community, so I'm restricting to the major actors still, yeah. um, will be measuring and manage nature-related risk. They will be responding to new types of disclosure requirements. They will have greater understanding uh, of the investment opportunities associated with it. And they will be facing um, customers, uh, they will be facing um, asset owners uh, and others that are pressuring them to do things that they are capable at that point of doing. Uh, obviously, that won't happen because of nature finance alone. But in other words, nature as a fundamental asset that needs to be managed by the financial community you know, needs to become that significantly within a relatively short period of time, yes. given the level of species eradication that we're seeing at the moment. That, that's, if you like, at the general level, and I'd hope that we can contribute to that. At, at perhaps just the more slightly more specific level, although still at scale, I think our work on sovereign debt is interesting, involves many other actors, and if one can advance the place of natural capital significantly in sovereign debt markets, I think that's going to make a significant difference to the way those debt markets work and the yeah. way nature outcomes in practice roll out. Um, and I think there are sort of two or three of those areas um, that are, if you like, not a project, but not a sort of global narrative um, that really makes sense. Nature markets, uh, just to complete the point, uh, as you referred to earlier, you know, are rapidly growing biodiversity credit markets, but also others. You know, I hope that through that task force that's currently in play, we can contribute to building more effective governance of those nature markets with associated positive outcomes for nature and people. Fantastic. Uh, well. 
That was a fascinating discussion, uh, Simon. Uh, thank you very much uh, for participating today. Uh, we look forward to continuing this conversation and teasing out more of the issues at the Natural Capital Summit, of which Simon and many others are speaking, which is being held at the America Square Conference Centre on the 13th of October. So we do very much hope to see you all there. Uh, it only remains for me to say thank you, Simon. Uh, look forward to seeing you on the 13th. Likewise, Morris, thanks very much for your help and I look forward to seeing you there.